Thanks, Alex. Thank you. It's uh, great, great to be here. I've long been terrified to be standing in front of a bunch of cameras with a name plate about this size. <laughs> I feel like I should turn for a profile shot. Uh, but before I do, uh, I wanted to chat with you a little bit about cybersecurity and, and the state of helplessness that I think many of us find ourselves in. Uh, and to do that, I really want to focus on the intersection between the dynamic worlds of cybersecurity and that of circus elephants. A very natural uh, uh, set, as you might imagine. Does anybody know how they keep circus elephants from running off? They chain them, exactly. In, uh, in zoos, you have these huge walls and pens. And in the circus, you, you don't. So you chain the elephant to a stake in the ground. And usually it's a, you know, a circus tent stake. Now these elephants are absolutely massive. Can they just pull those stakes out? Absolutely. In the wild, they topple trees. They can easily yank a stake out and, and, and be off with it. But they don't. Anybody know why they don't? Because they train them when they're babies. So when they're babies, they're unable to pull the stake out. And so they'll try it a couple of times, and they'll grow accustomed to being stuck. And as they grow up, and have these massive muscles, and they could do it easily, but they don't. Because they've been conditioned from the time we were, they were babies to realize that they're absolutely helpless. They can't do anything to free themselves. And so they stop trying. And so what I want to talk to you about today is this state of helplessness in cybersecurity. And this is a very contrarian point of view. It's not very popular. People don't like it. They don't want to believe that they're not helpless. They don't want to believe that they can do something about their cybersecurity. And they, or they've been conditioned to believe that they can't do anything about their cybersecurity. It's easier to believe that you're helpless against the Russians, the Chinese, the North Koreans, whoever the big bad actor of the day is. They're so sophisticated, and they're so smart, and they're so good. There's nothing that little old me can do to protect myself online. And what I'm here to tell you is that that is absolute BS. That is nothing but learned helplessness. What does it take to succeed in cybersecurity? Well, it takes the same thing that it takes to succeed in so many other fields, in so many aspects of your life, whether that's work, sports, academics. It takes work. It takes a lot of work and a lot of commitment. And that, it, it isn't even incredibly difficult work. It's hard, it's just a lot of work and a lot of commitment. We'll talk a little bit more about why I've come to believe that and why you should believe that as well. This thought that you can affect your cybersecurity, you can prevent yourself from falling victim, is incredibly liberating and at the same time, it's also incredibly terrifying. I can do something about this? The conclusion is that you can. You're responsible for your organization's cybersecurity. You should also be accountable for it. It's a pretty tough statement for the cybersecurity industry. In order to talk about why I've come to believe this, you have to look past the sensationalist headlines, the hype that we see so frequently in the news media, 
that focuses on the cybersecurity industry and look ultimately at the underlying data. So we'll talk about the underlying data and what you can and should be doing to protect yourself, how you can be safe. Before we do, I think it's important to acknowledge nation states are active in cybersecurity, absolutely. Just about every nation has active cybersecurity groups as part of their national security or intelligence apparatus. Why? I mean, it, hopefully it's pretty obvious. Right? It's incredibly cheap to mount a campaign. It's very cost effective. There's very low risk. You never have to step foot in somebody's sovereign territory and be subject to their domestic laws. And there's a high degree of anonymity. It's very difficult to do solid attribution in cybersecurity. So not surprisingly, you see every nation state operating online. You see organized crime operating online. What is interesting is that a vast majority of the highest profile breaches, think about breaches like Uber, like Yahoo, which cost hundreds of millions of dollars. Think about breaches like Equifax. Think about breaches like British Airways. Almost all of the highest profile breaches show absolutely zero evidence of nation state involvement. Again, nation states are active. A lot of the high profile breaches don't show evidence of it. So many organizations fall into this hype cycle and focus on how do we defend ourselves from these sophisticated APTs that they don't do the basics online which are required to keep them safe. Let's talk a little bit about that. So we've done a lot of research and analysis on breaches over the years. We're starting to pull that together. And what we found is that over 50% of the breaches over 50% were caused by known vulnerabilities and unpatched systems. It ain't rocket science. Now we also found that just over 50% of the breaches were caused by abuse of authentication, bad identity management practices. Now I know there are probably some math majors out in the audience saying, wait a minute, over 50% and over 50% does not make good math when you're trying to get to 100%. And the truth is that there is a intersection of these breaches where they'll use some sort of spear phishing or phishing technique to get authenticated into the environment, trick some user, and then once they're on the system, once they're in the environment, They'll abuse the fact that organizations haven't maintained hygiene in these environments. The systems are vulnerable to all sorts of different malware and exploit that is broadly available. And this just isn't the analysis that we've done. It was a Poneman Study Institute, just came out over the last couple of weeks, surveying over 3,000 organizations. And it found that about 57% of the breaches were caused by known vulnerabilities and unpatched systems. This, th there's a trend here. This is, this is actually a big deal, a majority of the breaches. In fact, when you look at the thousands and thousands and thousands of vulnerabilities that are discovered every year, less than one half of 1% have exploit code available before there are patches available. Less than one half of 1% of the vulnerabilities discovered have exploit code available before they have patches available. This is not an unsolvable problem. The dirty, unsexy, very inconvenient truth here is that you can protect yourself. It's not rocket science. You don't need to be a security guru. You don't have to spend your entire life and career in the security space to know how to do it. It boils down to doing the work. 
Now, many of you still don't believe. You don't want to believe. It's much more convenient to believe that you're helpless. There are armies of sophisticated adversaries out there. And there, and there are, right? Somewhere between 1% and 12%, depending on whose data you look at, depending on whose analysis you believe, somewhere between 1% and 12% of the breaches out there are caused by nation state actors, advanced persistent threats, the APTs that we all hear about nonstop on the news. Let's talk a little bit about the APT actors. This is, this is actually what they look like. Anybody know who this gentleman is? This guy's name is Rob Joyce. Rob Joyce um, recently left the administration. He spent the last 18-ish months uh, working out of the White House on the US national cyber effort. Prior to that, he spent his entire career at the National Security Agency, and his role at the National Security Agency before jumping into the, the, the White House gig, he was the director of the TAO, Tailored Access Operations. Tailored Access Operations is that group at NSA, as you might imagine, whose job it is to break into systems, gain access into bad guy networks, or other people's networks, I should say, break into other people's networks and gain intelligence, gain information. In 2016, a very rare event, uh, there was a USENIX conference in California. Rob Joyce got up on stage and gave an absolutely awesome presentation on how to keep him and guys like him that work for other governments in other countries out of your networks. And what he said, by the way, it's an awesome presentation. It's available online. If you're, if you're at all interested, go, go, go watch it. And what he said was that he would prefer, in almost every instance, to use a known exploit and a published vul uh, vulnerability on an unpatched system, not to burn a, a zero day. The focus, the key to success is persistence, not using the zero days. You get better access, you achieve better results, you don't burn your zero days, it's easier to hide. There's all sorts of wonderful reasons why the sophisticated APT actors avoid zero days. The secret in the APT world, even though the advanced is what gets the headlines, it's the P. It's the lowercase a, it's a big P. It's the fact that they're persistent. They keep going after the system trying different vulnerabilities, trying different exploits. Anybody who knows uh, this slightly uh, less well-known gentleman is, this guy's name is David Hogue. David Hogue is currently the senior technical director at Tailored Access Operations at NSA. David Hogue recently said in the last two years, the NSA has not responded to an intrusion that used a zero-day exploit. For people in the security community, this is like a holy shit moment. Like, wow, the NSA, whose job it is to respond to these very sophisticated actors, the foreign nation state adversaries, the NSA has not responded to an intrusion that leveraged a zero-day exploit in the last two years. This isn't just how our government operates. This is how APT actors operate. The problem is not the super sophisticated adversary. It's the persistent adversary that's willing to keep trying and keep working and keep going at the known vulnerabilities or exploiting the gullible users. The message here is fix your systems. Do something to protect yourself from the basic blocking and tackling that not only the basic adversaries use, but that the advanced, persistent adversaries use. Prior to uh, working at Tenable, I've spent a majority, 25 years, you think you're, you're tired, I spent 25 years working in, in cybersecurity starting out at the Department of Defense's Computer Emergency Response Team, 
uh, when that was founded. I was the founding director of the US National CERT program. I've spent a lot of time helping folks respond to incidents. And so what I'd like to share with you is a couple of very simple thoughts on how you can protect yourself. And these inconvenient truths do require work, but they're incredibly easy and nearly free to implement compared to the millions of dollars that are getting spent. Rule number one, know your systems and maintain them. The vulnerabilities have patches. The vendors provide the patches. The patches are available before the exploits. If you maintain your systems, if you put in the work, you're actually pretty freaking secure. It's a simple formula here. Again, I know we're not a bunch of math majors, but there's a formula. It works. The challenge here is that compute looks differently today than it did five years ago. We failed to do this in the simple world of desktop servers workstations. That's not how compute works, right? Today Wired's filled our heads with all these crazy ideas of creative things we can do with compute. The world of compute looks different. You have mobile devices and infrastructure. You have SaaS applications. You have cloud infrastructure. Your corporate networks, your environments have been invaded. Your homes have been invaded by smart IoT devices, which are on the network to be smart. Your enterprise may be leveraging operational technology, maybe industrial heavy, control systems, power, energy, production, transmission, distribution, or even simple office and factory automation and HVAC systems and inventory management systems. Compute looks different today than it did five years ago. That means knowing your systems and maintaining a good set of understanding on, on where they're exposed and maintaining their hygiene is more difficult. But it's work. It doesn't require a lot of dollars. It doesn't require a lot of sophistication. Do the work. The second thought is that if you are using passwords today, you deserve to be breached. But don't quote me on that, but you, you know, the, the shame on you. There's absolutely no reason to use passwords today. They are an evil in the world of cybersecurity, especially when you combine them with the users. And unless you plan on, rid, plan on getting rid of your users, I would suggest the better alternative is probably get rid of the passwords. There are amazing alternatives that are incredibly cheap and incredibly effective. Think about touch ID types of technologies or facial recognition ID types of technologies. Think about password management types of technologies which can use, be used without your awareness. It is easier today to go to passwordless systems than it is to maintain the God knows how many passwords we have and then they change and rotate and you have to remember them and then you forget them and then you lose your device and then you put the post-it on there. And even if you didn't, they're infinitely guessable and users are infinitely gullible. Even those that have spent their entire careers in cybersecurity are gullible with, with creative phishing. Get rid of the users or get rid of the passwords. I recommend the passwords. It's what the data tells us. This is too important not to do. Every great advancement that we talk about, all of the innovation that fuels creativity, drives efficiency in our economies, elevates our experience, whether it's in the world of medicine, transportation, manufacturing, communications, all of the possibilities around AI, all of these amazing, all of humanity's hopes and dreams and potential for the future rely on us being successful in cybersecurity. And it's not that difficult. It just requires doing the work. Thank you for your time.